it's really nice to meet uh, everyone, you know, uh, virtually. Uh, uh, as Annie introduced, um, Dan Hall, Associate Professor in Bioengineering. Um, so I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about what we do in my lab, uh, just as a quick introduction. So what we do is to fabricate, you know, make these, you know, micro devices actually like the one shown on this slide. But so what do we do with these devices? We actually use them uh, to culture human cells in a very realistic physiological environment, actually for the purposes of um, mimicking, you know, human tissues and organ units for a variety of applications, including drug testing. So uh, some of you might have heard this term, human organ on a chip. That's actually the name of the technology that we develop and, you know, use in our lab. Uh, these days, actually, you know, these systems are also referred to as, you know, tissue chips or microphysiological systems. So uh, what I'd like to do today, you know, uh, during this, you know, short talk, uh, I'm going to actually, you know, give, just, you know, give you a quick introduction to this technology and uh, maybe quickly walk you through some of the model systems we're, we're developing in my lab. Okay, so that's uh, what we're going to do today. Um, so these are some of the model systems I'm, I'm, I'm planning to show today. So uh, I actually, you know, I actually, you know, asked, you know, what, 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 what I would like to actually talk about, you know, in this short talk. So given the fact that most of you guys are undergrads, you know, who uh, might not be very familiar with this technology. I thought uh, maybe I would, you know, start by telling you a little bit about the design principles that we use to build uh, these organ chip systems. So I guess the, if you're new to this technology, one of the first questions you could ask is, you know, how do we actually make these organ chips, right? How do you go about designing and creating organ chip uh, systems? So obviously you would have to have a target organ Okay, so for, for this discussion, let's say we are interested in mimicking the lung and developing a lung on a chip. So when you have a target organ, the first step is to uh, study the anatomy of the organ and break the target organ down to uh, the most functional critical elements. So those are often called in physiology functional units. So in the lung, those would be the alveolar air sacs deep in the lung. So this is where a lot of interesting important things happen. And once you identify the functional unit, then the next step is to closely examine that unit or the system to identify the key uh, cell types and also the structural you know, features and so on. So in this case, you know, I'm showing a section of the alveolar capillary interface, the barrier between the alveolar air sacs and surrounding blood capillaries. So as you can tell, there is a, a thin layer of alveolar you know, lung epithelial cells on one, one, on one side, and there's a thin layer of capillary, you know, blood vessel tissue on the other side, and there's a thin uh, kind of interstitium, you know, in intermediate layer between these two uh, cell, you know, layers. And then we also pay close attention to, you know, biochemical and biophysical uh, cues that these cells and tissues are subjected to. So in this case, um, it's very interesting that you know, the alveolar sacs expand and contract during respiration. So there is a very dynamic mechanical environment that is found in the, in the alveolar system. There is air on the lung side, there is a flow of a blood on the vascular side. So once you identify those key features, you know, key cell types and environmental, you know, structural features, the next step is to go ahead and design a system, you know, microfluidic, you know, device, microengineered device that would allow you to replicate those features. So I'm showing here an example. Um, it's a, called the breeding lung on a chip. Actually, something that I, you know, developed, uh, you know, a long time ago as, as a trainee. Uh, but you know, you can actually uh, see in this animation that, you know, so this is a cutaway view of the device actually shown here. So uh, if you look at this, the middle portion of this device, there are two chambers separated by a thin prosflexible membrane. So we can get cells from the lung and culture lung cells on one side and capillary cells on the other side to mimic that you know, multi-layered structure. And you can also uh, culture lung cells under air. You can flow media on the vascular side to mimic that environment. And more importantly, we can actually use this uh, design to uh, stretch you know, uh, the tissue layer to mimic cyclic breathing motions in this man-made in vitro system. So, uh, you know, this is actually a, a good example, I think, you know, and, but, so you may think that, oh, maybe organ chip, you know, technology is all about mimicking just the structure and, and environment of, you know, those uh, functional elements of, you know, human organs, but it's far more than that. So 
by having these multiple cells and tissue types talk to each other in the same device, we can start thinking about mimicking more complex you know, functions and responses that occur at the whole organ level, not just the cell level, tissue level, but at the level of you know, the whole organs. So let me actually show you an example. So in this particular system, we actually wanted to mimic the, uh, the recruitment of immune cells actually you know, uh, during lung infection. So this involves a very complex cascade of you know, uh, biological events. And so as you can tell, uh, we put actually bacteria in the lung chamber to mimic you know, infection that happens in the respiratory system. We put actually white blood cells into the vascular channel. So I hope you, the, the movie is not too choppy on your end, but you know, this movie shows uh, this neutrophil uh, you know, in the vascular chamber sticking to the endothelial, you know, blood vessel wall. It actually crawls around and at some point is, it starts wiggling its way through the the cell cell junctions and one of the pentagonal pores on the membrane to get across the tissue layers from the vascular compartment to the upper lung chamber. And once inside the lung chamber, these white cells shown uh, as green, you know, uh, spheres here, they actually chase the bacteria and phagocytosin, just like what happens in the living human lung. So, you know, this is it's not a tissue level, cell level response. This is an organ level response. You know, that involves actually you know, the contributions to from from multiple tissues. And so, again, my po key point here is the uh, using these organ chip systems, you can you know start thinking about mimicking very complex you know higher level responses and you know functions. Okay, in human physiological systems. Okay, so uh, let me just you know I have let me yes seven minutes. Okay, so. Uh, let me actually just show you, maybe given given the time constraints, uh, I'll just show you one um, example of uh, organ chip you know, systems we're developing in my lab currently. So uh, about four years ago, we got this you know big grant from a Cancer Research Institute to uh, you know develop a cancer immunotherapy on a chip. So we were very interested in uh, using you know this technology to study how you know circulating immune cells interact with cancer cells in the tumor microenvironment. So one of the first things we had to do in this project was to engineer human perfusible blood vessels in micro devices. So how do we do that? So this is the device that we created to achieve this goal. And this is a cutaway view of the device. And so as you can tell, there are these two barriers sticking from the ceiling of the channel. So using these two barriers, we can trap liquid in the middle compartment uh, using surface tension. So this is a pretty well-known physics phenomenon called the capillary pinning effect. So injected liquid gets pinned along these barriers due to surface tension. So it never you know, it spills over to the side channels. So using this you know, principle, the method, we inject hydrogel solution uh, mixed with fibroblasts. These are the, uh, the cells found in the connective tissue along with endothelial cells, we gel it to embed the cells in this you know, hydrogel and we put media in the side channels to feed the cells. And over time, something really interesting happens. So what happens is uh, the endothelial cells embedded in this gel chamber compartment assemble themselves into 3D vessels that open to the side channels. So this is actually what happens during embryonic development. It's process, this process is called vasculogenesis. So if you look at this middle compartment, this is a bird's eye view of the device. So you can see these red endothelial cells, you know, over time they actually develop a vascular, you know, 3D uh, network structure in this hydrogel compartment. So we can engineer really realistic micro size, micro vessels in, uh, in our system. These vessels have open lumens. And we can actually also get these tissues out of the devices after we form them, after, after, we, after we do experiments on them. Uh, so this is a scan electron micrograph of a microvessel with open lumen in our system. We can do TEM imaging. I'll just skip all the details here. We can also tune the architecture depending on how many cells you put in, how stiff the gel is. Um, and the best part is actually these vessels are perfusible. So by creating pressure gradient or difference between these two side channels, we can perfuse these uh, blood vessels you know, with you know, fluorescent dye as, in, you know, as shown in this case. Uh, we can also flow microbeads, nanoparticles, and more importantly, uh, blood cells, RBCs on the left and T cells uh, on the right. So we're now using this as a platform to build, you know, develop more realistic human uh, tissue and organ unit models. And so one example is that uh, we actually have uh, pancreatic islet on a chip. 
So what we do is we get a donor islets and a cadaveric islets. We put them into our devices, we vascularize them. So with this system, we can support their structure and function for long periods of time. Um, we can also engineer fat tissue, uh, you know, that contains blood vessels using stem cells. Uh, this is actually a, a tumor construct uh, in, in our device. So what we do is we get tumor explants from our a collaborator at the hospital. We chop them into small pieces. We put them into our device with the vascular cells. And over time, we can form these heavily vascularized tumor constructs uh, that can be perfused with, you know, cells, drugs, you know, uh, and media and so on. So what can we do with that? So like I said, we, are, we, are, we have a lot of interest in using this technology to study how, you know, immune cells interact with the tumor, you know, constructs. And so uh, in this case, uh, we, the green actually, uh, you know, this uh, aggregate is a lung tumor, and these red cells are engineered uh, immune cells, CAR T cells. So this is a couple of hours, a couple of hours after infusion. You can see many of these cells stick to the tumor-associated vessels, and then over time, many of these cells infiltrate into the tumor, and as a result, uh, we see a very significant effect on the growth of tumors. So you can use this technology to really study how immune cells you know, interact with the cancer cells and the tumor microenvironment. So let me actually check the time here. Okay, so um, we're also sending those organ chips to space. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip over this, but you know, we can engineer human bone marrow and, and, and get you know, this uh, in vitro marrow to produce immune cells and also red blood cells while maintaining the, the stem cell population in this system. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to skip all over this. And, um, uh, and then uh, I think I have a yeah, summary slide here. So, and then, so you can actually use the same approach to model other, you know, parts of the body actually on, on a chip. So, you know, these are some of the examples, our recent publications here we have, uh, for example, muscle model uh, that we are using to, you know, uh, mimic uh, muscle wasting in cancer patients. Uh, we also have a blinking eye on a chip uh, designed to mimic the front surface of the eye called the ocular surface. And we also have uh, vascularized, you know, organoid models. These are mini organs we can grow in 3D hydrogel in laboratories. And so we can actually, uh, engineer these model systems to study a variety of, you know, physiological and pathophysiological processes that happen in, in the body. And uh, my lab also, you know, does a lot of work in the area of reproductive biology and medicine. So we have a placenta on a chip implantation on a chip model systems. I'll be happy to tell you more about offline. Okay. So um, I'm just going to, you know, stop here. I have more stuff, but uh, I'll just uh, end by showing lab. So this is my lab. And again, uh, you know, thank you very much for, you know, attention and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions you guys might have. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Dr. Ha. Um, so if there are any questions now, feel free to put them in the chat or to just unmute yourself and ask. So I see one question in the chat window. What is the significance of doing this research in space? Yeah, so yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't have time to kind of explain the background of this project. So um, one of the interesting, you know, potential applications of organ chip technology is to, uh, you know, develop model systems to study how human body responds to extreme environments. So, uh, you know, so microgravity is, is a great example of that, right? So. Uh, there's evidence that, you know, uh, astronauts somehow, you know, they get sick more easily during space flight. Uh, so there is actually evidence that there, there, there is actually a hypothesis that microgravity changes or compromises our immune function. So that's actually the problem we're trying to address in this project. Uh, so we can do experiments directly on astronauts. So the idea is to use organ chip technology. And in this particular, you know, study, we are uh, developing airway infection on a chip. We're actually connecting it to a bone marrow on a chip. As you know, you know, when infection happens, there is a lot of actually immune cells like white blood cells that come out of the marrow and come to the infected organ to you know, fight off infection. So we're actually trying to study how this process, very complex process, multi-organ interactions change in microgravity. So that's actually the goal of this project.